It's time to talk about another Disney Channel original movie, and today we're gonna look at 1999's Xenon Girl of the 21st Century. This is one of those DCOMs that stick out in my mind as one of the really popular ones that everyone was aware of. If you watched Disney Channel in 1999, you already know about Xenon. This intro is only a formality. Tonight, see the subpoena. Blast off with a Disney Channel original movie, Xenon, Girl of the 21st Century. No air duct cruising, no recycle bin diving, and please try to stay out of restricted zones. It aired constantly on Disney Channel. It was based on a children's book from 1997, and it was actually almost a TV show, but for some reason or another was produced as a film, which would go on to be popular enough to receive a sequel and eventually a threequel. The story follows Xenon Carr, a 13-year-old girl who lives with her family aboard a self-sufficient space station orbiting Earth in the year 2049. President Chelsea Clinton has taken a forceful and unwavering stand in favor of the harvesting of underwater vegetation as a major source of energy and food. Life on a giant space station in the future seems to be a bit of a mixed bag. On the one hand, you're living in a giant metal donut, and that donut might be all you know for your entire life. On the other hand, that donut is in space, and everything on it looks awesome. Microbe? They're about as thermal as some band from back in 2025. Turns out that the late 90s vision of the future is still very 90s. I think that's a charm that the movie shares with its DCOM counterpart, Smart House. It's really fun to watch a movie whose version of the future ends up making you feel nostalgic. Xenon Carr, is there something you wish to share with the class, hmm? Uh, no, Mr. Perez, I guess I got all flared up because I never knew history could be so thrilling. <laughs> Uh. Xenon is your typical cool, troublemaker kind of girl. She's fearless, does what she wants, and has no respect for authority. When I was a kid, these were all admirable traits, but now that I've got some years under my belt, I definitely relate to the adults in the film a lot more. <laughs> Xenon, please, control yourself. Xenon is loud, stubborn, and self-centered. In fact, one of the first things she does in the movie is convince her friends to sneak her into the airlock so that she can go on an unattended spacewalk. As a kid, I'm like, yeah, that's awesome. As an adult, no, no, you can't do that, you stupid child. But look at these visual effects. These are truly stunning. As I'm watching this, I'm realizing now how much of an inspiration Xenon must have been for the film Gravity. I mean, it's practically the same movie. Xenon's dad ends up catching her in the act, but instead of being angry at her for doing what has to be one of the stupidest things that you can do while living on a space station, he's just like, Womp womp, that crazy Xenon, what are you gonna do? I don't understand why I'm getting all the blame. I mean, the other kids were down there too. Excuse me, but were the other kids out of the craft? What's with the parents' outfits? The dad's in scrubs and the mom's wearing what I guess I would describe as business lingerie? I don't know if that's a thing now, but maybe in the future it is. Do escorts have business lingerie? In fact, now seems like a great time to highlight the outfits of everyone on the space station. Be sure to pay attention to the background characters as well, because all of these fashion choices need to be appreciated. I think one of the biggest highlights of the movie are the costuming and sets. The space station ends up looking like kind of a Star Trek meets Barbie situation. Aside from Xenon's room, the sets all have this futuristic minimalism thing going on, and then that's mixed in with a bunch of neon lighting and really busy looking outfits. It's like a futuristic mall food court. I particularly like the fashion trend of the spandex base layers with regular clothes on top. This is the future I think we should be working towards, which is why I'm rocking it today. Uh, I think it's gonna catch on. 
I did just have to make this costume out of stuff I already owned though, which is why my hands are covered. This is just a green screen suit, but I figure if I put pictures of real hands where my hands are, it should look basically correct. Not only is Microbe coming, but they're having a contest and the winner gets to dance on stage with Protozoa. Can you believe it? I'm gonna get to dance with Protozoa. So the buzz around the space station, or the space stay, as Xenon calls it, is that the Earthling band Microbe is gonna fly up and perform in space. And there's gonna be a contest going on where one super fan is gonna win the privilege of dancing up on stage with frontman Protozoa. Good evening, out of space rock and rollers. Are you primed and pumped for our arrival? Dude, don't ask children if they're primed and pumped. Xenon has a talent for creating these horrific dolls made out of trash, as we see here in the intro, and she ends up winning the contest with a handmade protozoa doll. Xenon car! I won? I really won? Big surprise. I like how even the other kids on the spaceship don't seem to like Xenon. I don't know that that's something I noticed when I was a kid, but I appreciate it now. At the same time all this is going on, the owner of the entire space station, Parker Wyndham, is visiting the ship with his lackey, Mr. Lutz, and they have an evil plan to infect the ship's computers with a virus that will crash the station and kill everyone on board. I don't really remember why they wanna do this, but I'm assuming it's money. It's usually money. Lutz delivers the virus to the computers by walking into a highly classified, but apparently unguarded and unmonitored area of the ship. He puts a teeny tiny disk into a teeny tiny drive and then types some wingdings with his ergonomic keyboard. I love everything about this. I love the random chunky 90s technology all over the place, very futuristic. Xenon gets caught spying on Mr. Lutz, and apparently this is a more serious offense than going out on an unattended spacewalk, because this time Xenon actually gets punished. I didn't break into the memory bank, Lutz did. I was only down there to spy on him. You could have put everybody on this station at risk. But I didn't do anything. Clearly, not for lack of trying. Uh, Silence, major. She's being grounded, which in this case means that she's being sent down to Earth to live with her Aunt Judy, who is in the movie a good amount, but I probably won't talk about her anymore. Hi. Oh, I can't believe you made it flying through space like that. I would rather face 62 weeks of dental surgery. Terra firma, that's my motto. The firma, the better. <laughs> Get it? Silence, major. Down on Earth, Xenon has to deal with the struggles of fitting into a world in which she doesn't belong. She has to navigate a new school, new friendships, new gravity, I guess. At school, Xenon is immediately ridiculed. Even this kid in the matching bright yellow polo shirt and fishing hat, even he feels confident making fun of the freak space girl. There's a scene where the kids are in swimming class, which is, I think, a thing in some schools. It wasn't in mine, but I've seen it on TV. Anyway, Xenon claims to be able to swim, but when it turns out that she can't, this guy Greg has to jump in and save her because the lifeguard is right there. She's right there. She's just like, what? Should I be doing something? I thought you said you could swim. Yeah, in space. Welcome to Earth. Something I still don't understand about this movie is how dumb Xenon is about some things. She thinks that swimming in space is the same thing as swimming in water. She doesn't know what a banana is. She doesn't even know what money is, really. 175, please. 175 what? Oh, money. She even uses Celsius. That one is super wacky, but the strangest of all is her reaction to rain. What's that? What's happening? Xenon, it's okay. It's just rain. Rain? Rain. I can accept uh, getting a little startled at some rain if you've never seen it before, but what are they teaching kids up in space that she knows all about President Chelsea Clinton, but she doesn't know what rain is? I remember this when I was real little getting caught in a summer storm. Wait, what? For some reason, I thought that Xenon had spent her entire life up in space, 
probably because she doesn't know what I rain is, this. but it turns out that she once knew what rain was, she just forgot. Okay. I had an alpha time tonight. Yeah, me too. Silence, Major! Xenon becomes fast friends with two boys named Andrew and Greg, as well as develops a friendly rivalry with the mean girl of the movie, Marjorie. Margie. Marjorie? Margie. Absolve me from interrupting, but my pack and I have a bet. They think that with those clothes and that do, or shall I say don't, you must be from some viral extreme place like Eastern Jersey. But I guess you were simply getting a six month head start on Halloween. The mean girl trope is one that I still really enjoy. And for some reason, it's especially funny watching little children roast each other. You win. It's the Halloween thing. Now, lend me that mask you're wearing and I'll have the most hideous major costume ever. I don't know. I just, I wasn't that witty as a kid. I probably would have said something like, hey, poop face, nice poop face you got there. Xenon is still digging deeper into her suspicions of the space station's owner, Mr. Wyndham, <laughs> and enlists the computer talents of Andrew and Greg. In a strange twist, it turns out that the kids down on Earth are actually way cooler than their space counterparts. For one, it seems like every kid on Earth is a proficient computer hacker. These kids are always just casually hacking into heavily protected mainframes without a care. I also really love that the computer virus is portrayed as a little alien bug that eats your desktop. Totally unnecessary. And that's why we here at Evil Co. have enlisted you, our elite team of coders, to assist us in our top secret mission. You're the best of the best. I have the utmost confidence in this team. Now, we need the computer virus to be sophisticated. It needs to be strong enough to take down an entire spaceship. It must be fast, it must be untraceable, and it must be ruthless. But that doesn't mean it can't be cute, though. After several hours of highly skilled maneuvers, I have managed to refashion this program into an undo file. That should remove the bugs from whatever system they've been introduced to. So Andrew is able to code an antivirus overnight. Again, this is all presented like, well, yeah, of course a kid would know how to do that. Who doesn't know how to code an antivirus? That's just common future knowledge. You know, for a girl who just got to this planet, you're awfully hard to get hauled up. This entire time, Xenon is being pursued by Mustard Man here because just before Xenon left the space day, her best friend Nebula crafted together an earring for her using a disc that Mustard Man dropped during his initial break-in. At one point, he thinks he's tricked her into giving the disc up only to find yet again another instance of impressive coding from Andrew. So she's got the antivirus, but Xenon's main problem now is that she needs to get back up into space to deploy it. And she solves that problem by hitting up Protozoa, the dreamy singer of the band Microbe that's about to leave to perform on the station. She's recognized as the contest winner who sent in the horrific trash sculpture and Protozoa himself gives her permission to catch a ride. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you. Mr. Zoa, this thank is strictly you. against regulations. <laughs> But Mr. Zoe, this No parental or legal guardian approval needed at all. You're a pop star and you want a child, you get the child. Now, we gotta talk about Protozoa for a second. The hair, the tux, I mean, clearly the dude is styling. I do think he should take it down a few notches sometimes though. I mean, your fans are five years old, man. Reel it in. 
The group arrives at the space station, which has slowly been shutting down and having more and more problems as the virus continues its assault. You'd think they would have radioed down and been like, hey, excuse me, our spaceship is kind of falling apart right now. You'd think we could reschedule that rock concert? <laughs> Luckily, Xenon is there to save the day, and after a dizzying 360 shot of arguing and convincing, she eventually forces her way into the control room and saves the day at the last second. Incorrect access code. I, I know this. I can do this. I'm not totally sure how she knows this password. Was it something Andrew told her? Or was it that when she was spying on Lutz in the beginning, she was able to see all the way across the room to his computer screen and memorize the wingdings? I don't know. Total system rehabilitation. <laughs> But the day is saved, which is a surprise to nobody because it says right on the box that she saves the day. So yeah, I saw that one coming. And then we top it all off with a performance by Microbe, which you might think is gonna be terrible, but it's actually really catchy. There are three guitars on stage, and at most I hear a bass and one lead guitar in the chorus. This guy must just be here to even out the dance moves. Nebula, according to Xenon, you're the true winner, mate. Just why don't you come on up there, come on! Xenon ends up letting her BFF Nebula dance on stage with Protozoa, since she got to spend the entire space shuttle ride with him. Come on, darling! Dude, don't tell your five-year-old fans to beat it. I'm trying to enjoy the music here. And what of Handsome Greg, the love interest? In probably the most bizarre twist of the entire film, Greg and Xenon don't end up together. Greg's still at home on Earth while she's up in space, and I get the feeling that they kind of like each other, but maybe she likes Protozoa just a little bit more. So that's Xenon, girl of the 21st century in a nutshell. Upon reflection, the story itself isn't anything stellar, so why does this film stick out so much in so many people's memories? Well, I touched on it at the beginning of this video, but the film's vision of 2049 is just really fun. In fact, it's probably gotten more fun with age. The outfits are just nuts. I mean, I hope this is what we're wearing in the future. I just have a hard time believing it. This kid here just looks like the Fruit of the Loom grape. And then there's the technology, all these ancient looking computers everywhere. I mean, they're using ViewSonic monitors for God's sake. I used to lust over these monitors in Best Buy newspaper ads. So even at the time the movie came out, it wasn't the future, it was just the present. Their little video pad when they talk to each other is hilarious too. Like they kind of got it right. They just weren't prepared for how thin technology was gonna be. On top of all that, the special effects are, I mean, they're great. They're, they're just great. And then there's the futuristic lingo. All the kids are saying things are major or minor. Sorry to barge you guys, but I'm in hysteria mode major. So Wyndham would have to be a Scrooge major to shut us down. We will blast him into orbital bliss major. What better way to enjoy it with adult interference minor? One sin minor in my life is a living black hole. But you're a lunarious writer, Neb. I'm sure it was impressive major. <laughs> Silence, major. Mm -hmm. This one I actually believe. Kids mm -hmm. say way worse than major and minor these days, so I believe that one. Also, the futuristic version of Oh My God is... Cetus Lapidus! Cetus Lapidus! Cetus Lapidus! Cetus Lapidus! Cetus Lapidus! Cetus Lapidus! They say it a lot, and I have no idea what it meant, so instead of doing my own research, I found a BuzzFeed article that says that Cetus is one of the largest constellations in the sky, and Lapidus 
means nothing, unless you spell it like this, that is, in which case that's the name of Saturn's third largest moon. So I guess it did mean something after all. I mean, it's still kind of nonsense, but it was at least based on space terms, which I like. I think my absolute favorite example of future lingo is this one, though. All right, I'm not your boyfriend. Not since she arrived. Not ever. I never was. I never will be. Swallow the reality pill. Read my flapping lips. Read my flapping lips. Now, those lips sure were flapping. Watch them go. Actually, maybe don't watch them. It's not finished or anything, but what do you think? So what's the verdict? At the end of the day, how do I grade Xenon? Well, I still think it's a lot of fun. I think that the route that the plot takes is pretty standard, but the setting and the costuming are all just a blast. Look at Xenon's mom wearing her futuristic stress but helmet. Mess up again, and your father and I will be forced to ground you. <sighs> that thing is supposed to relieve your stress, and if it existed for real, I would want one. It looks terrifying. This is a really fun Disney Channel original movie to revisit if it's one that you remember, and if it isn't, then it might just be fun to watch just because of the setting. When I think of the term retro futurism, I tend to think of really cool illustrations from like the 50s to the 70s. This is like a really ugly version of that, which maybe makes it more realistic, I don't know. So I'm still a really big fan of this movie, even if Xenon herself drives me a little bit crazy now. Also, Greg. I don't really like Greg. Cetus Lapidus. Pretty alpha, huh? Pretty humongous. Yeah, you know, I'm into horses and cybercrime, the usual. As with most of my media recommendations, this one is definitely better with a friend because you're going to want to roast as you watch. And again, there are two sequels to this movie, so if you really want to know what happens in Xenon's future, you can. You can also watch as they replace Raven Simone with some random girl in the sequel, and then bring Raven back for the threequel. That's always strange. I don't really remember much else about the sequels, honestly. I think that in Z3, she talks to aliens, but I'm not totally sure. So that's all for this video, but if you have any fond Xenon memories, you should let me know about them. I think it's really fun getting to see how other people felt about movies that came out during a time period when we weren't so connected. I know how I felt about the movie, I know my sister liked the movie, but I have no idea what the global reaction to it was upon release, you know? Okay, bye. <laughs>